and it looks like we are recording. Hey, hello, welcome to today's painting lesson. Together, we are going to endeavor into a warm, serene summer piece with a really relaxed atmosphere filled with beautiful green hues. And of course, as per usual, it will be in real time. That said, let me tell you about some exciting resources up over on the Patreon page, which will help make the drawing and painting process a lot easier. As a patron, you will get access to the traceables for these lessons, which will make it so you don't have to worry about getting your proportions or perspective right by yourself. Additionally, you can find my ebooks covering composition, color palettes, glazing, brushes, as well as just about everything you need to know about acrylic painting. Also, there are over a hundred bonus lessons up over on Patreon that you can't find here on YouTube. And you can also get personalized art critiques from me so you can get feedback on your work while continuing to improve your techniques. There are a lot of great resources up there. I do recommend checking it out. And with that, now we are going to jump into the lesson. It is a long one. It is a fulfilling one. And I think there are a lot of great little lessons within it. So let's relax, enjoy, and stay creative together. So we're going to begin here today by taking our one inch flat headed brush, dipping it in a little bit of water, then proceeding to wipe off the excess. This will just help keep our paint wet for a little bit longer. From there, we'll grab an abundance of titanium white, the smallest hint of our yellow ochre, and another small hint of our burnt umber. Then we'll mix these until we get a nice warm earthy white. And we're going to look for the openings in between each of our trees where light is going to pass through onto the ground. So for the most part, we can actually fill in the vast majority of this. I'm going to be somewhat cognizant of my pre-existing drawings, just so that I know roughly where they'll be later on. But right now, we're essentially just Grabbing that light, working it all the way to the back of our opening. There will be shadows from the trees that work in between, and there will be shadows from the foliage as well. Now that we have that light interjected, we're going to mix up a bit of a warmer, darker mixture. So more of our burnt umber, more of our yellow ochre hint of Mars black, just using the corner of the brush, because you don't need a lot of pigment to do a lot. We'll keep it relatively saturated by reinterjecting the yellow and the brown. And you can see just how nice and warm this is right beside that one. So now I'll follow the tree that I've drawn in and start to create what will be a nice shadow. The edges are going to look a bit softer because I'm going to work over them a couple of times. We'll get a soft blend between the two. Just like so. And we have another tree right here. So the process becomes pretty intuitive. It's we find a tree, we assume the light's here, it's going this way. And because of that, it's going to render all of these shadows which we will build on greatly as we continue. There are a lot of trees in the back here. They're fairly close together. So the openings are much larger towards the front of the canvas and they dissipate as we get into the distance. That said, we do need a little bit more paint. So we'll mix that up. And we are going to do multiple layers in the middle of the shadows to build up those darker values. We're also going to, again, be mindful of the fact that we have all of this foliage here, which will also be casting a shadow. 
So we're going to go to the left hand side and then with a bit of a tapped stroke work our way inwards. And we want those pitter patters because they're going to make it look like we have a nice granular dirt and texture. It'll just look a lot more natural. We're also going to have shadows on the other side because there too will be this same foliage, same effect. We're also going to eventually get to the tops of these trees, which will cast shadows with their foliage. So the shadows on the right hand side are being created for multiple reasons. That said, I think I do want a bit more of this to fill in here. And you can always go back and forth with the lighter pigment. So don't feel like you have to be too careful with the darker one, as we can always just paint over our layers. It's the beauty of acrylics. Now we'll get you a little bit closer and we'll mix up a slightly darker variant of that warm brown that we had. So good mixture of our two hues, burnt umber, yellow ochre, slightly more Mars black than we used before. We can still have a hint of titanium white, but we don't want too much because we don't want to desaturate it dramatically. And we can use this more so in the center of a lot of the shadows. And then we'll do those same little tap and drags towards the outskirts to make sure that they dissipate and feel natural. We'll do this predominantly in the foreground, so the area that's closest to us, because there we typically see the most dramatic of contrasts. As things get into the background, typically values and hues amalgamate a little bit. You have that atmospheric light and reflection, it kind of makes things congeal color-wise. So darker in the front and then progressively it gets lighter towards the back. Okay? Now from there I'm going to grab a little bit of a mix between the two just because I lost the transitionary pigment between the really dark and the really light and I just want to re-interject that as it keeps it feeling a lot more natural. There we go. I also want to imply that there's more foliage up here, so I'll just fill that in to a greater degree. And then the foliage will be randomly interspersed through rotated taps, which dissipate as we get towards the back because I'll just naturally run out of paint, so you don't get as stark of a marking. You can see how we're implying all this foliage. It does disrupt the initial mark making that we did for the bodies of the trees, but that's not really an issue. Because it's just going to look more natural this way. Then we can grab a bit more of that lighter pigment, work that back in. And it's that back and forth that eventually finds us to a place we really like with it. Don't get impatient, just keep adding those layers and eventually you'll find something you really like. Now we'll take a step back and incorporate a step that'll make this look a lot more realistic. And that's going to be recreating a mid value. So this is something that can kind of sit in between both pigments and feel natural. 
We kind of created a little bit of it with our blends, but this is where we really double down on making a good amount of it and we make it on the palette. And we're doing it here because we're actually going to apply it with a different brush than what we have been. This is quite close. We just need it to be a little bit more brown. None of these mixtures are yellow heavy. So while we're using brown and yellow, the brown is typically the more dominant pigment in the mixture. So I think we're close, very close. Just do slightly more of this. I'm spreading it out widely on my palette and then I'm switching to our stiff fan brush. We're going to grab the pigment softly with both sides of the brush, flipping it over, and then in between the darker brown and the lighter hues, we're going to tap in some texture for the road. This is going to give us so many minute little details that we couldn't render with a regular brush because here we're pressing individual bristles into the canvas where in all of our other applications and with every other brush we're using a collection, a larger amount of bristles to make marking. And as you can see, up close it looks a little bit messy. We are going to fix that. We're going to remix something similar to what we used for our highlight. This time I will make it a little bit more yellow dominant for the first time. And that's beautiful. So we'll get a nice wide spread across the palette so it's easy to pick up with a fan brush. We're going to go back in towards that central space and then very lightly I create those transitional edges which are now comprised of all of these nice little soft applications. And we're not digging too deep into the shadows. Here I think is a proper example of what we're working towards in a lot of it. If you overdo it, again, don't worry. We can very easily just re-interject those darker and more saturated hues. You can see how we went from making it messy to making it all really fit together while also interjecting a lot of additional detail that just wasn't achievable with the other brush or technique. Again, there's less of it in that distance. Now, because we don't want all of it to be extremely textured and detailed. We want some areas that are just a bit softer as the light will almost overexpose and blow out certain sections visually. And we'll paint those in with the larger flat-headed brush. Yet again, I'm just going towards the central portions of our ground. We'll also find and create some openings. And this is also just to show you that if you overdo certain areas, it's okay, because it's not hard to go back in and just re-interject light. And this will all look a lot better later on in the painting process. We do need to leave it somewhat unfinished for now because it's going to change dependent upon how we do this area, but I think this is a solid start. We're doing it all with the corner of our larger flat-headed brush. However, 
We can also switch to the filbert brush. It's great because it has that nice sharp point at the top. It can carry a good amount of paint, but the edges are also rounded, so we can do some blending very simply. So here's an example. I'll just use the edge to blend out the sides, create something a little bit softer looking while still keeping its form. It's just going to make it look a little bit more diffused, which is a really nice effect when you're painting light, especially in a setting in a time like this. So we're just blending out those edges with the edges of the filbert. Also, exciting news for those of you who follow the channel regularly and you kind of keep up to date with all that we're doing here. The brush set that I am using is, as you know, our brush set for the channel. Use it for all of these lessons. And we just had that sale a little bit earlier in the summer. And I got a lot of messages from people noting that they just weren't able to grab it on time. So, sale is back this weekend, 50% off. So if you want this brush set and you missed last sale or you did purchase the brush set and you decided you wanted another one, now's a, a great time to do that. Half off is uh, it's pretty great. So if you're interested, you can check that out. I'll have a link in the description as I always do. Or you can also find the traceable for the lesson to help you with the drawing process and, and all of that. The description of these videos also typically is a material list and it's just a useful thing to check out in general. So now it's starting to come together. I am going to add an extra little detail here by re-rendering the darker hue that we were working with. So again, a lot of Mars black more of our burnt umber than our yellow ochre, but still a little bit of yellow ochre. Still a hint of titanium white. And there's a branch that comes off of this that I want to interject. I think that's probably a little bit too dark. We'll go brighter initially and we'll go saturated initially and we can just darken it up as we need to. But I do really want this branch because I think it's a unique piece that'll add a lot to the painting. There we go. And then there's another one that's up here, but I think that we can just get lost there. Now we need our transitionary hues. So extra yellow, extra burnt umber, extra titanium white. We'll do a lot more of this later on in the painting process, but right now we're just trying to get the general base down and the elaboration can come a little bit later. That said, I do think that's looking a little large, so we'll re-interject the lighter hue as well. To soften that. We'll just kind of go back and forth until we find something that works nicely. I like that a lot though. Now from here we have some sap green on our palette for the first time. We're going to move that to a clean spot and mix a mid-green. So something we can make both brighter and darker. Now this one is also going to want to we want to make it a bit gray so that we can build our saturation on top of it. But I think this is a really good place to start. So what we're going to do is we're going to place this initially around the base of our painting, around the edges of the ground here. And I'm going to try to not cover the entirety of my drawn in trees. That way we can keep them for later. I'm going to make the tops a bit more spotty. That way it's easier to blend up later. So it's 
getting a bit more thin, a bit more sparse. I'm trying to be mindful of where these shadows are because I want to essentially dodge those areas here. We don't have a lot of greenery in this spot. Now you can also tell that this is rather thin. You can see a lot of that canvas showing through. That is A-OK. -okay. We're also going to line the back of this with that same foliage, just peeking through our trees. Using the larger flat-headed brush because we have those sharp corners to deliver small details that, have, that can protrude, but also we can carry so much paint, it's so very easy to work in these large areas. Here we'll just have a couple openings between our trees, and that's what I'm painting, just openings between trees we are yet to paint. That's why it's not everywhere. We're just trying to be mindful of some specific areas. And these can be different. You don't have to copy mine exactly. It's really whatever feels right in those settings. And we're doing this right now so that we have time to wait for this to dry so that we can go back and do our second layer. This is still a little bit too wet to apply that second layer though. So I think we'll just give it a minute. And in that period of time, I will just make sure that the base here is also applied and that we have our little protrusions for the bushes and foliage that find their way down here. Just like that. Nice and easy. And remember that these have shadows, so here we can see the shadow. So I'm putting the green right behind it to show that the green is going to be creating the shadow. We have a bit more here, so that it protrudes a bit more here for that shadow. Okay, so I waited about five minutes. It is fully dry to the touch, so we're going to go back in there now with a second layer, which will make this look a lot more professional because Often the second, the third, the fourth layer really do. Adding that opacity to your bases is such a valuable thing to do for your paintings. It makes it look like you put the time in, did the due diligence, really cared for the piece. That's what we're doing right now. We're just going over our existing layer Lots of little taps along the edges. We already know where we're putting the paint, so really is just like coloring in a space at this point. Nice and easy. In the smaller sharp areas, I'm applying very little pressure so that I get that nice clean application with the edge of my brush, but when I need to fill out an area, I apply more pressure as it expands my bristles and it makes it so I can very quickly and easily get a lot of paint on that canvas. So your technique will vary through the application process, even with the same brush. Let's just fill in these areas right here. And then, as we move up on this side, we're going to want to make it a lot brighter, even for the base layer. So I'm going to take titanium white, sap green, create a nice mid-green mix, and we'll just start working that up in between our branches. I'm not too worried if I go over the drawing because we can always re-interject that later on, especially if you're working with a traceable, should make it nice and easy. But for now, 
we'll just do this. We'll do some little taps and drags into the pre-existing darker base. And we'll do the proper top to it a little bit later. But we're just kind of setting the stage to make our lives easier in the future. Now, from here, we're going to mix up the darkest green yet, and this is going to be for the shadows. So, we'll grab our sap green, our Mars black, hint of our titanium white. We don't want a lot, but we do want some. And I'll spread that out fairly wide because, yet again, we are going back to our fan brush. This has been dried and cleaned. We want it to be dry so that the bristles don't stick together, and we get all of those little markings. And now we'll just go in and start tapping all of these minute details and protrusions. The idea here though, the majority of these, are essentially deeper portions of the foliage where we can't really see in. There just isn't that light, there's too much foliage surrounding it. And because of that, we'll get these great little pieces which will add to our depth. I want the majority of these darker markings to happen towards the bottom, the base. And it's also worth noting as I go in with these taps, same goes for here. I'm not pressing with the entirety of the brush, I'm just using about a third of it. That way I can be a bit more controlled and my markings don't look too linear. For the most part I want them to look randomized. So I'm also rotating my brush in the air. I'm not rotating the brush on the canvas because once we're on the canvas, we essentially just render streaks. And that's not our goal right now. There are portions where you are going to want it to be more linear, like what we did through here, but this is different. With that, we're going to let our pigment naturally run out as you work towards the back because we don't want this area to be as dark as the front. We don't want it to be as detailed either. We're also going to work our way up a lot of this until we get to that halfway point where it should essentially just dissipate into nothing. We don't want a lot of pigment on our brush through this. It is intended to be much more subtle. Now we'll head over to the right hand side and do that same thing. This will likely look a little bit better because we've now had a chance to practice. That's just typically how it works and that's okay. We can always go back and touch up this side should we need to. But again, I want the majority of those darker markings towards this transitionary space. And then as we run out of pigment, we work our way upwards, we work our way downwards. Lots of rotations with the brush. This will give us so much nice applied detail later. None of this will show through in the end, by the way. We are adding a layer on top of it. At least one, likely multiple. And that will dramatically change how it looks. This is just a base and a foundation. There we go. Now, from here, once that's all nice and dry to the touch, we are going to render a nice mid to lighter green, similar to akin of what we have here. So a lot of titanium white, a little bit of our sap green, hint of our Mars black. We really don't want much just because it's a much more powerful pigment. But we'll continue to mix these until we get something that's definitely in the realm of getting brighter, has the opportunity to, but is naturally relatively bright itself. I think this will work great. So, once I have a good amount, I'll mix it widely on the palette, as we do. 
switch over to the fan brush. However, this time I'm going to make my fan brush nice and damp. I'm going to dip it in some water, wipe off the excess, and as you can see, now instead of having hundreds of little bristles, I have one, two, three, four, five, six larger points. Makes it look like a fork, and this makes our taps a bit larger, which is great for foliage in the foreground. So we'll grab our pigment, same way we did before, and here, I start to apply a lot of these taps to apply foliage. It'll get lesser once we get farther down from the protrusion. And we'll find our protrusions by the areas that stick out a lot. So it sticks out here, it sticks out here, you can see them on this side. That protrusion essentially marks an area where there's going to be a buildup of foliage. So we work our way up from there. We create this top portion. And then once we have it, we work our way down and back and we let that paint dissipate. You can see it gets lesser and lesser. It's more subtle. Nice and easy. Now we'll go to the next protrusion, which happens right here. Yet again, we're starting at the top. I'm applying more pressure because I want larger markings. I want them to be larger the closer we get to us in general. And then as the paint dissipates, we work back and this way. Here we are, yet again, same idea. We want these markings to be fairly different though. So we don't want all of them to go up on the same trajectory, the same angle. We want some of them to stop lower, to get a little bit more convoluted, a little bit more blended. And towards the back, we're going to leave less openings. And I know you're fairly far away for this right now, but don't worry, we will get you closer for this. I just want you to see what it looks like as a whole so that we don't accidentally end up with hyper-focusing on each individual area and then not making them look good on the larger scale, right? Because the larger scale is important. We don't look at a painting typically from you know, half a foot away. We look at it from multiple feet away. So we're trying to make sure that right now it does exactly that. Now we're going to have to repaint a lot of this foliage and greenery over our trees a little bit later, but that's okay. We're just working in our base layers. So now here we are on the other side, grabbing that pigment, finding that protrusion, working our way up in a unique way. It doesn't just have to be a singular angle, it can be up and down, some of these taller than others. And now some of that pigment is starting to run out, so I'll just work my way down from those pre-established clusters. Just looking for those interesting spots. Love that. Love that a lot. Much better. And we will tap these into those upper negative spaces. Not concerned about going over the open, unpainted portions of the canvas. So I'm trying to make sure that I don't neglect the edges. I think that's an easy thing to do when we're trying to stay inside the confines of the base layer, but we don't have to. It's not a necessary thing. So the goal, remember, is just to focus on making a lot of this unique initially. And then I'm building up the areas that will get a bit more light, be a bit more prominent, be a bit more full and dense. 
So, I really like our base for it right now. It's time to continue building, continue adding light, really playing with that. So, we're going to make a brighter green. We use our sap green, we'll grab our titanium white, we'll mix it in our pre-existing area. So it still has a hint of that Mars black, but we are definitely venturing into something that is quite a bit brighter, a little bit more saturated. I'm trying to spread it wide on the palette. We're going to make sure our brush is nice and damp. We're going to create that fork effect, just like so. Not all stiff bristled brushes will do this, by the way. This is something we very intentionally work towards for the set that I released, but you can do it with a soft bristled brush instead if you don't have this set. With that, there's going to be little pockets of light that work their way over here, right? In the same way that we have these pockets of light down there. So we're just going to find areas in which it makes sense for those to exist. Sometimes it'll act almost as a as a line, and we can do that a couple times in the background. But we don't want them to be evenly spaced out, or it'll start to look a little too intentionally formed. There we go. And then we can just have hints of it up towards the top, but not much at all. And again, I'm ignoring the edges in large part. So, we have some extra light down there. We can continue to build that extra light with warmer hues a little bit later on. But we're also going to have that light work its way on the tops of these and then slowly come down because it's in this line in general, right? There we go. There'll be a little bit of light towards the right hand of this tree. You can see that I'm kind of mapping my brush strokes before I make them. And then we're going to do a lot of this up here with a larger application. By larger I mean I'm applying more pressure with the brush so that I get a larger spread. And it's predominantly in this middle section because the light's going to be coming this way. It's going to be working through this area. There we go. Back to the mix. Going for a much more titanium white heavy version as we continue to build this brighter. I'm going to start up in this area. Let it dissipate towards the top and towards the bottom. And this makes these highlights look a little bit more subtle, which is nice. It's all relative, right? The brightest subject on your canvas only looks incredibly bright until you add an even brighter subject. And then it redefines that scaling system and how we perceive it all. So, I like that so far. We are, however, going to grab a new pigment that is going to be cadmium yellow, medium hue. You could also use a primary yellow. Lemon yellow could also work. 
but we'll just add that to our palette right beside the yellow ochre. And we'll use this to warm up our green, make it a bit more saturated. You see just how dramatic of an effect that had so quickly. Mixing a wide amount. Love that. Back to the fan brush, back to the opening, back to introducing light, and just like that, speaking of light, it seems the clouds have moved out of the way of the sun. And now we are back. Might be one of those days where we get to see what our painting looks like on a very cloudy day, but also on a very sunny day. I mentioned this before, but when I started painting, days like this would kind of annoy me a little bit because I would feel like I was constantly seeing the painting in a different way and it was difficult to, in large part, keep track of my colors and what was actually being done until I realized that there isn't a right or wrong to that lighting, that all of that lighting is inevitable, right? We'll get it on different days. And it's just an opportunity to see what it'll look like on both of those days and you can kind of adjust for Maybe I want it to look a little bit better on sunny days because I have more of those. And maybe I want it to look better on rainy days because that's just the feeling, the atmosphere, the aesthetic. A lot towards the back though. Because we're going to have a lot of light coming out of here. I'll just have it dissipate as we get closer to us. Now the next step is a big one. We're going to do the base layer for the majority of the top of our canvas. And we're going to begin by taking some of our cadmium yellow. Everything here is fully dry, so I'm essentially working on a clean area on my palette. We're going to grab about half that in our yellow ochre. Then we'll grab an abundance of titanium white to mix up a nice brighter yellow. They go double up on the yellow ochre. And this gives us a warm hue for our background. I'm going to apply this, as you can see, towards the opening that we have. And we're going to have a lot of trees on the left and right hand side, so I'm not too worried about those areas. But I am going to start blending it out in an arch, as you can see. And we're bringing it significantly farther out than we really need to because it's just going to make our lives a little bit easier in following steps. So, now that we have that, we're going to interject some green, a little bit of sap green, and we're doubling down on the yellow ochre. Now we'll apply that right above, like so. Yet again, double down on sap green, yellow ochre, progressively making this A, more green, <laughs> but B, warmer, C, darker. Because the farther we get from this opening, the darker it should be, naturally. Because we're moving away from the light. Now, it's okay if you have brush strokes in this, it doesn't have to be a perfect blend. And that's the case in large part because we're going to have a lot of different clusters of foliage in this. And this will just add an extra layer of texture and interest. Now yet again, doubling down, yellow ochre, sap green. We go wider. And I'm going to start moving around some of the more notable trees that we've painted in, just so I know where they are. I am losing the majority of the branches towards the top. I'm also okay with that. Those are things we can redraw in with ease. It's pretty intuitive as to where they are. And you can see that I'm working this
higher and higher. We're doing multiple layers to keep it nice and thick. We'll do little taps into the pre-existing green. Because we do need to make these cohesive in the end. Now more sap green, more of our yellow, and a little bit of Mars black. A little bit of titanium white. We're going to start desaturating it a bit. We do so predominantly towards the left hand side, towards the top. Again, I'm dodging the more prominent trees. branches. We'll do our blend down and in turn blend up. This is all still somewhat wet because I went in with a damp brush and just kept that pigment wet. However, if it's not and you have more of a dry scratchy application because it's wet and dry, that's also okay. I know right now the hues don't really match. The greens that we have, the saturation level is in this and this, it's okay. Trust me. We're going to interject more Mars black, a little bit more titanium white, more sap green. So as we get towards the top, we lose a lot of that warmth, and we also lose the yellows. We'll have plenty of trees in this area. Do a bit of a blend with this down. Starting to get a little chalky in my application. It's not as smooth as it once was, that's okay. And I'm going to start to make it a little bit brighter again as we move towards the top right hand side. So we're going back into our yellow ochres, titanium whites, sap green. And we're doing this because we have that light coming in from the left hand side, it's going to illuminate portions of this. And we can brighten this all up substantially as we continue. But for now this will work well. You can see how quickly it gets dark again, and it's darker kind of in this region, and then through there. We'll go back and we'll do that a couple of times. While it's still nice and wet. Still keeping a couple ideas of where my branches are. And again, I'm not worried about the brush strokes. They add nice texture. Just adding in some unique designs and patterns. There we go. It's very chalky down here. I'm not getting any soft blends anymore. I actually like that. It's making it much more interesting. We'll just make a couple of these layers slightly more thick. A 
And then we'll wait for that to dry. There we go. From here, we're going to try to start adding some texture into this so that it works with everything else. And the first step there is to grab a bit of a yellow ochre, hint of our Mars black, hint of our burnt umber, and we're just going to mix up this slightly darker yellow that you can see here. It's fairly earthy. We're switching to the fan brush. It is nice and dry, so it's like a stiff bristle again. All of those bristles are individual. We have hundreds of them rather than five or six. And here, we're just going to start tapping in some of that texture. However, this time I am doing it in a fashion that is somewhat linear, where in the past we tried to randomize it in the foliage. Now I'm trying to work with the general arch that we've presented. So here's just an example. You can see how that works all the way across. This is also still in the category of base layers. It will look awkward. That is okay. We just need it to build up. So don't get discouraged. When it doesn't look incredible initially, it's not meant to yet. I'm also applying more of these towards the bottoms. And it gets sparse as we get towards the top. I'll get you a bit closer though. So here we go again, starting at the bottom, working in that arching fashion, allowing the majority of it to dissipate as we get towards that middle section. And we're going to bring this out into the point where we're entering the more olivey green mixtures that we rendered thanks to the blending of the yellow ochre and the sap green. This will also look nice towards the top because we'll actually be able to see it in contrast with the darker green. We don't need to do a lot of it there. That's where we'll predominantly do highlights and things, but I might just splash a little bit of it so that it feels cohesive later on. That said, we'll put that brush back down, we'll pick up the larger flat-headed brush, grab our yellow, titanium white, a little bit of that sap green. Much like the actual arch, we are slowly going to interject that green, and we're going to slowly make it darker and darker. So, adding in Mars Black, but not a grand amount, not initially. We also don't need the burnt umber in this mix anymore. You can do it if you find the transition from the last pigment to this too stark, but I think this will actually work quite well. And I'll even work it into the previous portions slightly, predominantly towards the bottom. Not afraid to go over the white areas of the canvas. And, of course, we just work our way up. You can see that it's getting lost in similar values. It's not a bad thing. Now, yet again, we're back to the Mars Black, the Sap Green, the Yellow Ochre. We're in a much darker pigment now. And this will be great progress. It's not the darkest. There's still room to get darker, but this is noticeably a strong transition. Working it towards the bottoms. I'm not going to go all the way to the back because this is a little bit dark for that. There's just so much light in that area and I want to respect the fact that it's Kind of engulfing that space. Yes, it means it's going to be less detailed than the rest of this, but it'll look better because it is. 
It'll stand out. It'll have a positive effect on the painting. And while I used to only press about a third of the brush into the canvas, with this brush here I am opting to do a little bit more because I am looking for linear applications. Not randomized like a lot of the previous foliage. And while this pigment is very stark down here, you can tell that we are getting to a place at the top where already it's blending value-wise into that which we already have, and therefore it isn't standing out really at all up here, which is a sign that yet again we should go back and do a little bit of altering to our pigment. I'm just finding a couple other spots that are slightly brighter where this will still resonate. And we are going to do a lot in this transitional area, so don't worry. I know this looks quite <laughs> unfinished, and that's because it is. So, that brush is back down, this brush is back up. More Mars Black in the mix, a little more saturated, a little bit more green. Spreading it wide. Starting at the top. Let's get you a little bit closer for this final application in this style. So here we are, just grabbing more of that pigment. Even though we're at the top, I'm still working in that arch, imagining that it's showing much more than it is. So we don't get blocky, we don't get lazy towards the top. We're still invested in the general movements we've been working to portray. And as it dissipates, I will bring it down to a point. That way we're also moving this wild dark green mixture into the rest. Just trying to provide as much good visual context as we can. Really like that. Good separation. Let's double down on part of the bottom. On both sides. You can see how this is starting to transition well. Now, before we add foliage to the top here, I really want to create a transition between this and this. We're going to do so by grabbing a lot of our titanium white, a little bit of our yellow ochre, a little bit of our cad yellow, smallest hint of Mars black. We're mixing up a very warm, brighter hue. This is all dry, by the way, so I'm just working in a clean spot on the palette. We'll switch over to the fan brush, which I am going to make nice and damp, and turn that into more of a fork shape. We'll grab that pigment, and we'll start creating openings in a lot of our greenery and foliage through here. And the larger openings are going to happen in between the transition of this and this. So we have our two different pigments, our two different colors. 
and we're going to try to create some level of large scale separation through here. We will later take the green that's down here and interject it up here. And we might take some of this darker hue and work it down here. But for now, we're just looking to create openings in the foliage to make it look like there's areas for that light to shine in to a greater degree. And I know that it's going to be stark initially. However, we are going to cover a great deal of it with our trees, our foliage. So don't worry about that. There we go. I'm going to switch actually over to the larger flat headed brush. I'm just going to use the corner of it to implement some intentional openings as well. And I can see in the reference photo there are even some that are closer to down here, which is quite neat. There we go. And then I'll also use this to go over some of the areas we've already done and just make sure that it's nice and thick. Again, this will all look quite awkward for just a little bit, but it will start, make, start making sense soon. We're just trusting the process. We're trusting the layering, the foundations. You've seen the video thumbnail? You know how this actually turns out. So you can trust in that. Once we've instigated that to the thickness of our choosing, we're going to go back to the nice lighter greens that we have down here. And I believe again, they had just maybe a hint of yellow, but not much. We still have a little bit of Mars black because we don't want it to be wildly saturated, but it's definitely on the brighter and more green palette. So we'll just bring these together, put that down, pick up our larger brush. However, we are going to make it damp, condense those bristles into that nice fork shape. And here we have them. We can see that it does match, it is the right pigment. We're just going to apply some of these on top of this general area, on top of the openings, because there will be foliage there too. And we'll just bring these into that mid section, like so. Slowly dissipating as we get towards the bottom. We don't want too many down there, but we do want that general hue and color interjected in that space. And we can do some up here, but we're really pressing the brush into the canvas because we want these markings to be larger as they are a lot closer to us. So just like that, we bridge that once awkward gap we have all of that light still potentially streaming through. And from there, we can start layering on more of the actual applications for these areas. All of the actual foliage, getting to the top layers. I'm going to grab this brush. We're going to mix up a nicer warm pigment to begin with, with both yellows, titanium white, this should act as a, can be a highlight, can be a little bit darker, can be both, depending upon the, the leaves and where they are. That'll be a, a nice highlight. We still want our brush in that fork-like shape. And we'll start placing these towards the back. We're not going to make them too full because we want to do multiple layers like this. And we need to do our trees along the sides first. But we can start here. This is 
is a lot of building. It's really what this process is about. And you can see that this highlighted pigment, that is created through an amalgamation of yellow and titanium white, actually matches the openings over here. So it brings these sections together well. And we'll just do an amalgamation of taps, trying to work in the general direction of the arch, but I am occasionally making them a bit more randomized. go. I think that's just about high enough for that pigment. We'll grab our larger brush. We'll make a more yellow ochre dominant hue. Slight bit of Mars black this time. And this should still be bright in comparison to what we have in this midsection. We'll do a Bit of a blended area and I don't mean a, a technical blend we're not really trying to make one pigment turn into the other we're just layering this over the previous area so we're getting an optical blend and then we're building this out into what is currently the negative space in terms of details in the foreground a lot of light on this foliage right here we can even interject a little bit of it down into there to a point. See that? Fits well. We can also grab this and work it into there. Now we'll take that same brush a little bit of our sap green, work that into the yellow ochre mixture, still using a bit of Mars black. This should be brighter than that which we have there. It's this nice olive green. Pick up the fan brush, make it nice and damp, take off the excess. Initially, we work a little bit in the previous area to create that transition. Then we work our way out. I'm applying more pressure with these applications because I want the foliage to be bigger in these sections. Perspective will just make these subjects look larger. Like so. Need to make it a bit brighter more titanium white, and I'm going to do a little bit more of our sap green to reinstate saturation, because every time we add that titanium white, we desaturate it, partially. Much better. That said, the last layer, while it wasn't exactly what we wanted, it is quite nice for the layering process. I think that it's a great subtlety for a base highlight. And it definitely adds to the painting. It definitely makes it better. So don't worry if the first application isn't exactly what you want. You can add new ones and it's very likely, especially in this portion, in this process, that those earlier ones just really build on the piece as a whole. All right? Again, more pressure. As we get closer to us, you can tell that these applications are getting larger. I'm also letting them be more far apart. That way there's a greater contrast between the darker backdrop and these. Make it a bit more bold for the foreground. So also isn't all of the leaves we're doing. This is just a step. And again, 
We're just building those transitions into this area. From here, we're swapping back to the larger flat headed brush and we're building up a fairly dark brown. We'll still use a good amount of titanium white because we want it to be desaturated to a point. We're also going to still use a little bit of yellow ochre because I want it to have some warmth in it and feel cohesive with the rest of the painting. But here we have a, a nice mid brown. We'll make that a lot darker, but there's still room to make it even darker. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to head to the back of our painting right here. And I'm just going to start applying the bases for trees. We have a lot on this side. We're trying to avoid the greenery which we've worked to incorporate in between some of them. And they'll be going from different interesting angles. We're just putting in a base silhouette right now. It's very simple. The goal here is just to get an idea of how the trees are moving, where they are. You can see that's quite thin. We will need to go back, but it's a fun way of just noting almost what it'll look like with highlights on it. And now we apply some extra pressure, get some extra size. I feel quite cathartic to cover up this much of the canvas. Grab more of that pigment. I can still see where part of the more unique branches are, which is fun. Though you can always redraw them at this point from the traceable, which of course you can get up over on Patreon. If you're new here, up over on Patreon, you can get access to the traceables to help you with the drawing process, reference photos, uh, my ebooks, including acrylics for beginners, which is essentially the essentials, everything you need to know about acrylic painting before you jump into your first acrylic painting. There are also a bunch of ebooks full of additional traceables. You can access to our exclusive Facebook group where everybody shares their renditions of these pieces. It's really great to get that positive feedback while also seeing different ideas and renditions, ways that you can play with it and you know build on your style as well. I'm really proud of that community. It's a very positive place try to hop in when I can and give advice as well. We also do art critiques up over on Patreon. And we're currently working on a really large painting series. It's exclusive to that platform, but it's on a 24 by 36 inch canvas. Quite large, it's probably going to be a seven or eight part series, but we're currently about halfway through on that. So if you're interested in any of that, go ahead and check it out. It's also just a great way to support the channel. The channel is predominantly community funded and it's because of you and everybody up there that we're able to do lessons like this. So big thank you to everybody up there. With that, I'm quite happy with this area. I've just been going back and building it up, making sure it's nice and thick. But I think it's time we head to uh, another spot. Now we're just going to move a little bit upwards here in the painting. And as you can see, that'll give us an opportunity 
to work on some of the higher branches. When I'm working on these, I think a lot of people like to create larger elongated strokes. So they apply the brush to the canvas and then they just keep going with it. And they interject little swerves and tilts and all of that. However, I'm a big believer in not doing so and instead creating lots of smaller taps, sometimes with a little bit of a drag, and that will often give you a much more natural looking branch. They can look a little synthetic when they're too smooth and they have that arch from just dragging the brush. And there are some trees where that does work, it does make sense, but I think for the vast majority of them, you get a much better result when you're doing more so what we're doing here, which is progressively just making small taps and drags. A lot of this is quite thin, but that's okay. We will do multiple layers, we will build it up. You can see how even the branches in the foreground really wrap around the arches and the canvas. Creates that similar compositional effect as a lot of the taps that we did initially. I'm going to make this a bit bigger. And we're also going to have smaller branches down here, which we can actually apply with the same brush. We just use less pressure and we maybe make our brush a little bit more damp, a little bit more watery. We also have it sometimes go in and out of the foliage. So I'll tap and then there will be an opening, right? And I think this will actually be better over here. So I'll start just turning this into a, a tree on that side. But a lot of these will get smaller and smaller as we go into the distance. Now I'm not really going to do more of them in this area because I want those applications to be a bit brighter. So what I'm going to do with the remainder of this pigment is actually head over to the right hand side, rather the left hand side, the, uh, <laughs> the monitor I'm using is inverted, but we'll head over here and then we'll start building in the same way that we did. And I'm looking at this shadow right here and I'm building the tree for it, right? Same with this one, finding that shadow, building the tree. And the tree will wrap around a lot of this foliage. We'll definitely layer foliage on top of it as we continue and progress. But for now, we are working it around foliage as if it's sitting behind some of it. Trying to give it a good, thick application. Work this branch there as well. And again, this is a place where you could re-sketch in the trees if you want to. I'm just looking at the reference photo and going off of that. So I'm fairly confident with where I'm applying things. But you can approach it however is best meeting your comfort level.
like that. Start working on some smaller branches. That jet out. And of course we have more trees in the background here. We actually have quite a few. If we need to change our shadows a little bit later on we can do that. Now I have a very watery mixture which is a lot brighter than what we previously had for the silhouettes. So I am going to use this to a point. Again, this is an area that I wanted to wait to do brighter. And we have that opportunity right now. We can do that through either changing the mix or just having a much more watery version of our mix. Like that. Still a lot of work to be done, but we're getting there. Definitely getting there. Now we'll just get nice and close so you can see the difference between one layer and multiple. Really is dark. This tree goes here. Trees should get smaller, but these are also condensed in the background that you don't really see the openings just because of the visual optics of it. There we are. And we can also use this opportunity to build on our branches where we see fit. I like a little one through here. It's kind of wiry, I like that. Makes it unique. And we're not trying to do an endless amount of these because we still need to put foliage on top of them and then add more of them after that. There's a, an elaborate nature to this process, but I think we have a good amount for there for now. Now it's time to make sure that these trees don't all just look like silhouettes. So I'm going to grab some burnt umber, about an equal mixture, if not slightly more, of our yellow ochre, titanium white to thicken and desaturate it, and then Mars black to darken it a little bit. And what this is going to be is a highlight for our trees, at least the portions of them that are going to be receiving light. So the light's coming in this way, which means the left-hand side of all of these trees is going to have a highlight. And I'm going to start applying that with my smaller flat-headed brush Great because I can pick up a lot of paint with it, but I can use that very sharp edge to deliver it and make something nice and soft. So we'll grab this and I'm going to begin not in the very back, but here just so we have a little test area. And I'm going to try to get the edge. If I falter though, I'm going to falter on the side of going over the edge instead of going behind it. The worst aesthetic you can have is when you essentially have the dark and then the light and then the dark again. So here, as you can see, we're just slowly interjecting these and I'll get you a lot closer. So you should be able to see quite a bit better here, but we'll start at the top and then we'll find what would be an edge. And you can see that I'm not doing a singular line down, much like we talked about. It's a series of applications. 
and occasionally they'll overlap a little bit. You don't want them all to be straight. We do want them to be a bit more unique than that. And they get closer together. They get tighter as you move into the distance. The trees themselves aren't actually farther away, but the visual of them is because of perspective. Then we can have little protruding branches like this, additional trees. breaking off branches and we are going to follow the branches as well there we are this is only layer one we are going to build on all of it but it is important that we get a nice thick good initial application because we are essentially mapping our trees right now just have this one kind of come forward overlapping those again creating unique trees is an important task there we go might also do a little blend back with some of these larger ones Same rule applies, we press harder with our brush and we end up with a more dominant marking. Little taps right behind the original one to create the look of bark. We can only really do this as we get closer to us because we just won't see that detail in the distance. Just like so. Again, just a first layer, but I think it's going pretty well. It's a larger tree, it's closer to us. We'll go right behind that first line, we'll go in for those other taps, leaving some spacing, letting it dissipate naturally as it moves towards the back and right hand side and this one this one's quite fun, I'll try to stay in frame for you it's much larger, it's the biggest one on this side, therefore it gets the most attention and detail I'm working my way back letting that pigment dissipate we have some nice bark texture already. So yet again, same idea, however, now we're working on more unique branches, which are a bit higher. Light's still going to be coming in this way. So we're still working on the left-hand side of these branches with our highlights. We'll let it dissipate not only as it moves back and towards the right, but also upwards because it'll be a lot harder for light to get up here than it would down here, right? Because we have the we have better openings. This is quite thick towards the top. So I don't have much paint. It's very thin, so right now I'm just doing the, the top portion because it isn't we don't want it to be as prominent visually. Same rule, we work backwards, we create that nice texture, makes a lot of paint initially for this reason. There's quite a number of trees and we want to make sure that we can apply a consistent nice pigment for it. I'm going to go over some of these areas couple of times, particularly 
initially in the foreground. We are going to need to brighten up the background to a large extent. But right now I am focusing on the area that is right in front of us here. Holding my brush a bit farther back, as you can see, that's going to take away some level of my intentional mark making. It's going to randomize it a little bit, but I like that. It's going to make it a bit more unique. So where I may have been falling into patterns that we don't want, because that makes it feel less organic and natural, this will remove them to a point. Now I have almost no pigment left on here. I'm essentially going to do a wash. My brush is essentially just water with a little bit of this hue. So you can see we're taking away all of those darker hues, those darker values. We're just making it so it progressively and get darker as you move towards the foreground. Like so. Let's go in yet again in that background. This time with fresh paint and an actual amount of paint. And we're just brightening up some of these edges, making them a bit more prominent. It's the same way we did in our foreground. And I'm going to really double down on those highlights, specifically right through here, not so much towards the top, just because this is where we'll, we'll have more light for the most part. But I'm still being a little jumpy with my brush, and intentionally so, so that it's nice and randomized to a point. So, so far so good. We're going to Head upwards, do slightly more, however, I want these branches to be a lot darker because of where they are, they're just not going to be receiving that much light. So I'll throw some extra highlight towards the bottom of our more prominent branches, and then when I just essentially have very little pigment left on my brush, it's quite watery, that's when I'll head up and I'll add the texture here because I still, still do want that texture, I still do want it to be cohesive with everything else. I just don't want it to be that bright. So we get the initial pigment off elsewhere. And then... Let me just bark that all in. There we go. Still needs a lot of work, like as a whole. However, I think that's good for now, and I'm ready to move onto this side, and then we'll work on both of them together. And then we'll add more foliage, and then we'll do the background, and we'll probably do a glaze over here. <laughs> there's a lot, there's a lot to just still do, but this is fun. You know what? We're gonna take this opportunity to just mix up a little bit more of our pigment. While we're, well, the camera's a bit farther away so you can see a bit better the process. I'm still keeping a bit of the initial mix up towards the top, so I know that I'm remixing the correct pigment. Right? It's good to leave a little reference point for yourself. That's quite gray. Let's re-interject saturation with both the burnt umber and the yellow ochre. There we go. That looks quite nice. We don't just go with the first pigment we mix, we remix it till we get what we really want. Now this area is a bit more interesting in that we're going to have a lot of light on the left hand side because the light is going this way, right? But it's also going to wrap around the tree and we're going to get some on the right hand side. So I'm starting right here and I'll let it dissipate as it gets towards the bottom because we are going to lose light as we get down there just by virtue of shadows and all of our other foliage. So we will make sure that that edge is nice and thick. Again, overlapping the true edge, 
perhaps even going over it a little bit. That's okay. And then as we start to run out of pigment, we can create those with nice little taps that work inwards. Running out of paint, this is good. Don't want to go too high because I don't want to lose this on you. But then again, when I don't have much paint, we can go to the other side and create that light that's working its way around the tree. We can do bark there too. And just kind of go back and forth until we have something that feels nice and three-dimensional. Grab more pigment. Tapping that edge. And the more you do this, the faster you'll get at it. It'll just become second nature after a point. And then we're going to need to break up a lot of these trees. But they're all so close together that we're going to see that light on both sides of them to an almost equal amount. We're not really going to be able to differentiate, rather, from this distance. So here, I'm doing what I did on the other side. There we are. And I'm starting to run out of paint. So now I'll work inwards on this tree. Work on the other side of it. You know what? I think I want to cut through this one. We'll just make a bit of a darker hue akin to what we used for the base. And we'll just re-interject this branch like that. Not tricky at all. From here, we're going to mix up a brighter pigment than what we just had. So we're going to throw some extra titanium white into that mix. Might grab a hint of our cad yellow, just to give it that nice warm hue, re-interject some saturation. And with this, we can go to one of two brushes. We can go to the liner or the smaller flathead. I'm going to stick with the smaller flathead for a little bit, but yet again, we're heading to the area in which the tree receives the most light. And I'm just building out additional highlights, applying them over pre-existing highlights for the most part. Still doing this in staggered applications. And this is predominantly reserved for the background. Because we have a lot of light working its way through here. We, of course, do need some over here, just not as much. This will certainly add to the depth of the subjects, though. Love this really adds a lot to the painting in a subtle way. I'm 
Lots of tops. Take that. Do a little bit more over here. Not a gratuitous amount, but just enough to show that it too is receiving some of that bright light through the trees. Now we'll get quite a bit closer and we'll make our mixture into much more of a yellow. So titanium white, a lot of cad yellow, a little bit of the other yellow ochre. And I am going to switch to the liner brush and I'm going to start to take the yellow that we have up here because I essentially remixed that. And I'm just going to drag that back down into some of these areas and just create a bit more of a natural transition from one into the other. This will just make our light feel more natural. Like it's moving as it should. We can also take this, because it's essentially the color of foliage, and apply it down towards the bottom. Foliage. I'm just going to tap this on liberally in the back and then we'll let it lessen as we get towards the foreground. This will also instigate some extra depth. Didn't really make sense that we had it at the top but not at the bottom because that light will still work in this way despite the fact that it's going this way, right? Then we can work that onto some of our trees. Just make it very cohesive. Not all of them, just predominantly the more distant ones. And you can see we're getting rid of a lot of the darker hues in the back just by virtue of adding a lot of these applications. go. Again, we don't need too many of these taps, of these highlights, but we do need a couple. We can throw it into areas that there might be extra light in the foreground, on these branches, but we do so sparingly. So I want that on this side, where that light might be coming through. And we can also use this as an excuse to layer some foliage over our trees, just a little bit. I'll also just make the side here a little bit warmer by taking the larger flathead brush, making it very watery, grabbing a bit of this pigment, moving to a clean spot on the palette. We'll just go here. Again, just adding water to our mix until it's essentially like watercolor. And then I'll add a bit of a warm glaze to the background. That way it all just fits together. You don't have to do this if it's already nice and warm and it feels cohesive. This is just an extra step you can take to just make it all match. Be careful though, you don't want to do this if any part of your painting is still wet. 
is it will rip off paint. Now, things are definitely moving in the right direction. I'm quite happy with it thus far. We still need to do this, but we also still have to do the final layer of the leaves that are up here. This is going to look a lot better. So we'll grab our sap green. We'll grab a little bit of Mars black. A little bit of titanium white. We don't want to fully saturate it. And we do want to uh, we do want to thicken it. The titanium white will help thicken the sap green. Titanium white is inherently one of the thickest pigments, so great for situations like this. And then we're going to grab the smaller flat-headed brush for the actual application. Now here, a lot of our leaves and such we've rendered in the past with the fan brush. However, I'm now going to be doing so with this because I want a larger marking and this is what will give me a natural sized leaf for the foreground. So I'm just going to tap a number of these on here, not too too many, but enough. We don't want to go too far down with them because eventually we end up in a place where they're just too large. But we do have quite a bit of room where they do fit, where they do make sense. We are going to be overlapping a lot of the branches because it makes sense that they will have clusters of foliage over them. And I want a slightly darker mixture, so extra Mars black, still a lot of sap green. Just like so. Not all of these clusters are going to be receiving light. And because of that, we're going to get this great vignetting effect around the tops and edges of the painting where the foliage is going to make it look a lot darker. We talk about this in most lessons, but the eye innately does go to the brightest point of any piece, picture, or painting. So, by making the top corners and edges darker with this darker foliage, we ensure that the eye goes towards the center, which is where we actually want it. So, this is great because it makes sense within the context of the piece. And, additionally, it looks great. Trying to create clusters, they're not all individual leaves. A lot of them are clumped together. We need to be careful over here because we have a lot of open space and we're not going to get as many dark clusters, but we will still have a few. I'll make sure that we have one up in the corner. And that portions of it move down. We're also, while I'm moving my brush quickly, I'm trying to ensure that the actual application is nice and sharp. I don't want lazy brush strokes here where the edges have a lot of tooth or soft or semi-opaque. I want all of these to be very opaque. And that might mean going over them a second time, double checking edges, doing all of those little steps which do add up and make for a better painting. But you can see how layering these on top of a lot of our branches gives the painting that extra depth because now it doesn't look like the branches don't have anything on them, it looks like they're intertwined within the rest of the piece. Mixed a lot of paint because we had quite the surface area to go through. However, it is worth noting, 
can always go back and mix more. It's not like we're actually doing any blending, so it's not, we're not on the clock at all. There we go. I really like the dark hues, how they match on the tops and the bottoms to a greater degree at this point than they did. Just little details here and there. And then our markings can get smaller as we get towards the center. So far so good. Now we're going to render more of a brighter greenish yellow leaf. Something akin to this. Good combination of the hues we've used thus far. And yet again, we'll go in with the smaller flat headed brush. And we'll also paint on some areas that do catch light. not only close to us, but also farther away. And when they're farther away, we'll just do a tiny tap with the corner of the brush. We're not using the entirety of the end. We'll double down on making these nice and opaque. We can have a cluster through here as well. Occasionally we will have individual applications, but I am a fan of the clusters. We'll get great depth and contrast if we layer it on top of or around the last application as it was quite dark. So here I'm attempting to apply it predominantly to the right hand side of, or rather to the left hand side of some of these leaves. Just adding an extra level of variance, right? Let's make a much more bright green mixture. There we go. We can interject this too. If we do too much of it, that's okay. We can always just go back with the darker hues and cover it up. So we're just going to be exploratory. Bounce around a little bit. Let's take a step back. Okay, great. Up close, to be honest, I wasn't sure that I liked these green applications, but when I took those steps back, I realized I really liked them. And again, it's when we're farther away that gives us the real information, right? That's how we typically look at paintings. So, I'm going to double down on the green. And I might, I might do something a little dramatic in a second, once I've incorporated as many of these as I'd like. We're getting very close. It almost looks like these are just on the very bottom, kind of pressing outwards and therefore catching light, right? I think these stand out beautifully, but not too much. Though what it does do, so I feel like it makes the yellow ones that we applied look a little bit awkward. So what uh, we, you know what? Just give me one second. 
Just want to confirm something. Taking their steps back. Okay. So what I know I need is just a couple more applications through here. Taking that step back. It's good. Now, we are going to go back to a darker green. Really quite dark. I am mixing with a smaller flat-headed brush. This brush is not bad at mixing at all. Though I do think we could go a little bit brighter. And once we have this pigment in the way in which we want it, I'm just going to cover some of the yellow leaves. Not all of them, but a couple. Because I don't want to overcomplicate the foreground. Yes, we have the opportunity to add the most detail. because it's closer to us and perspective will just allow us to see a better, more full version of it. However, we really want the eye to be able to move down in the painting and see that passage, that light, which we are going to paint in by the way, but I want the eye to be able to move down there naturally. And if it's too complicated up here, that will not happen. So we're just trying to find that balance. Not too much at the top, but not too little either. The best way of doing that is just going back and forth with the highlights or the shadows, taking physical steps back and away from the painting, going back towards it, once you have that larger assessment and you know what you want to do, what you want to take out. There we go. There's one area right here. Much better. Okay. So with that, I think we'll, uh, we'll get a bit closer again. Now, we're still not done with this area right here. We do need to go back. We need to do a lot of touch-ups through that. But what we're going to do is we're going to start working on this space right here. And that way we know what we can do elsewhere. This will dictate everything else. So I'll get you a bit closer and we'll finish up covering up the remainder of the canvas. Now, I'm going to begin by rendering a pigment for the ground. We're going to continue this path upwards. However, it gets much brighter through here. We don't have the shadows from all of these trees. So we're going to grab a little bit of our burnt umber, a little bit of our yellow ochre, and a lot of titanium white. We want this to be significantly brighter than that which we've previously used for the sand. And I think this should be it. It's close. It will be brighter in the final rendition. This is fine for a first layer. But as you can see, we are dramatically going to go brighter. Because this is essentially sun-soaked. It's one of those situations where if you're taking a picture, it would look very overexposed. And we're trying to capture that idea. I love having this opening be incredibly bright, and I want to stick with that in general. So we'll let that dry and while we do we'll start working on some of the trees in the background and for the first time I'm going to use a cerulean blue. I'm doing that because we have a lot of shadows back here. Those shadows will be cooler but we'll still have it be quite overexposed in aesthetic. So this will stand out really nicely as it's a unique color to the painting though we will keep it somewhat subtle. Everything here on my palette is dry by the way so if I apply pigment here I'm not mixing it with anything. So this is essentially a clean spot on the palette. With that, I'm going to make this a greenish blue. So we are also working our sap green into it. We're going to make it quite desaturated. So Mars black and titanium white, they'll mix together to make a gray. And this is nice, but do you want it to be a little bit darker? And because I added that extra Mars black, I desaturated it, so I'm going to add some extra blue, a little bit of extra green, 
Again, we're not going with the first pigment we mix, and here you can see it in relation to our other greens. So it's not a pure blue, it just has blue in it. And this would be great for the real distance, the real background, right through there. Now we're going to mix a brighter variant of it, and we're going to add in a little bit more green. The less shadows there are, the more green we have. And this is going to initially go right here. You don't have to apply this with the larger flat-headed brush. You can switch to the smaller flat-headed brush or the filbert. But I like this one a lot. So, a little bit more green. Good. Now, from there, let's go with the same pigment at least on the bottom here. And we'll do a lot to build this up. Right now it's all very flat, that's okay. That's how it's meant to be at this point. You can see that we're using that sharp edge of the brush to get that nice rounded motion towards the top. And then we also have a little bit of ground which is protruding. from here, just like so, <laughs> looking in the monitor it's, uh, it's quite bare, it's quite funny, it's okay. From there we are going to make it a little bit textured, so extra Mars black in the mix, you know what brush comes next, we need our fan brush, and we'll just tap on some of that texture. Trying to randomize my strokes, so I'm only using about a third of the brush. And I'm rotating in the air. Various angles and whatnot. There we go. Looking a little bit better. It's still not good, but it is a little bit better. Now we are going to switch to the smaller flat-headed brush. And this pigment over here, I want to make that a little bit more blue and a little bit more brown. So we'll take a hint of blue, we'll take a hint of brown, and we'll make a shadow pigment for this tree right here. It's going to be casting a shadow on the ground itself. And you can see I'm doing a soft blend by just doing a slight tap and drag. Letting the pigment wear off. Nice and subtle. Okay. From there, we're going to make a lighter mixture for a lot of the greenery and foliage. Something that is sun soaked. So I'm going back to the larger flat-headed brush and we'll go with our green, we'll go with our cerulean blue, we'll go with an abundance of our titanium white. I want this to be a bit more green. Good start. Yet again, grabbing the fan brush. And here we'll start to create shape yet again. So, as you can see, I'm creating separation between the trees on the left and the right hand side of this path. A lot of this is still wet, so I'm getting a slight blend. It's looking a little bit softer than it normally would, but I like that because we are working in the background and we're just not going to have that same level of texture detail that we would have in the foreground. So, so far so good. Yet again, back to the palette and I'll get you, get you even closer. There we are. Now, admittedly, up close, looking very rough in this area. That's all right. It's meant to be that way at this point. We're just going to grab some extra titanium white, work that into the mixture we were just working with. You can see that it's still not 
blue, it's not truly a green, it's kind of somewhere in the middle. Grabbing that fan brush, we're going to try to be very intentional with getting those edges at first. Then we'll work that in. Head on over to the other side. There we go. Want the tops of the trees to be quite a bit brighter. Being very careful to not get it into the yellow sections. There we go. Putting that brush down. Back to the larger flathead. More titanium white. And this time we're going extremely bright with a hint more green. Again, the idea is that this almost looks a little bit blown out. Now, however, I'm going to switch to my liner brush. Make sure that's nice and damp to condense my bristles. And we're just going to tap on Highlights, they're going to progressively become lesser as we move towards the bottom, as the pigment just naturally runs out. And we'll have it stretch a little bit towards the top, start to meet this area, which will also be a series of taps. And now that they're more intentional, I can make this area look more unique than it was. Still trying to leave lots of little openings. And it's worth noting the pigment that I'm applying, the pigment on my palette, is looking very different on the actual canvas. And that's because we have quite a bit of water on our brush. And that's thinning our paint to a great degree. So I'm getting a lot of the pigments that are underneath it showing through. Some of those pigments underneath are also still wet. So we're getting actual blends as well as optical ones. And all of that is diluting this brighter pigment into something a bit darker, which isn't a bad thing. It just means that we are going to go back and layer it again. So again, less of the highlights towards the very bottom. They're a bit more towards the top. More titanium white. We brighten that mix up. And this is really saved for the real highlights, once we know exactly where they are, what areas we want to make as prominent as possible. Though this too, much like the last layer, is also diluted and darker than it is on the palette. We have more green in this than the palette version. It's also worth noting, if you didn't want to make the background cool like this, you could have also went in with those same warm hues that we used in here, so you just essentially swap out the cerulean blue for yellow ochre. That's a preference thing though. Just saw in the reference photo that it was uh, a blue. Figured it made sense within the context of it being in the shadow. And it's a bit more unique this way. Right? It's not an entirely warm painting. No, there is a lot of warmth. I think it still extrudes the feeling of warmth. We need to make the background as a whole brighter. So I'm going to take my smaller flat-headed brush and we will recreate 
That's Sandy Hugh. Go back in, make it brighter. This is layer number two. Much better. That made such a difference. Okay, let's take a quick step back just so we can see how it all looks together. Now, stepping back, I strongly feel <laughs> like it looks very rough right now. However, I can definitely see how it's going to look great in the very near future. So, stay strong, stay with me. We are going to move through this awkward phase here. We're going to take our smaller flat-headed brush and I'm going to create a wash. So again, like a glaze, just very simple. I'm going to use a little bit of sap green, a lot of titanium white. We'll water that down greatly to the point where it is like a watercolor. And this is all fully dry. Have to make sure that it is, otherwise we'll just rip paint off that canvas. I'm going to make the entirety of this brighter, at least the foliage. So this means brightening the highlights, brightening the shadows. We're just adding light to this area, and in turn it's also making it look a little bit more diffused, which I like a lot. Applying it at the top, and then we let it dissipate as we work our way down. Just like so. Now what we'll do is we'll switch back to the larger flat. We'll mix this pigment wide. Grab our fan brush. And we'll just apply more of that texture with that very bright pigment. Again, the idea is to make it look like it's almost overexposed in the background and in the distance. Jumping between brushes. Our markings are going to be much closer together towards the top. Being careful to not overextend into the outer portions, at least not to a great extent. There we go, much brighter. You see how that feels like it's full of light now, in a way that it didn't before? We're going to also walk back areas if we feel like they got too bright or we just lost shape. In my case, I do feel like I lost a little bit of shape. So I'm grabbing the liner brush. I'm mixing up essentially a similar pigment to what the shadow pigment is now. Not what we initially had, but what it looks like now. So that's sap green, titanium white, cerulean blue. We can just reshape a couple of these portions. Maybe create some openings. Just like that. Again, just starts to look better and better the more we do, right? From there, next step, I am grabbing the yellow ochre, the cad yellow, titanium white. We want this to be a predominantly titanium white mix, so I might even, might even move this over here and grab some extra titanium white. But this is supposed to be really bright and warm. So a, a contrast 
with the blue that we have in the background. And then we're going to essentially apply this tapped foliage around the top of our arch with a liner brush because you want that extra level of control. And this is going to give us a slightly blown out warm look in a similar way to what we have in the background and it'll just make them fit together a whole lot better or make it feel significantly more cohesive. We'll go even brighter. And then we'll do a little bit of a drag, stop and go drag, little taps towards the bottom of our foliage. Because this area too will be receiving a great amount of light. We'll take that same pigment and we'll start to tap it slightly inwards. With the tunnel. You can see that it's expanding. Okay, next, we're going to the smaller flat-headed brush. We're grabbing this pigment, making it nice and thin on our brush, and we'll work this down the sides of a lot of these trees that are exposed to the light. Applying very minimal pressure so I can get a small application. Brush is quite damp, so these markings will be semi-transparent, but it will be worth it to get that smaller, more precise stroke. You can always go over it again and again. And I'll also do a couple on the right hand side, or rather the left hand side. Again, it's, it's inverted for how I see it, but There we go. Doesn't that make a, a massive difference? Okay, let's pull back a little bit and we'll continue. So now stepping back, I think it's safe to say that we're finally finding that place that looks quite nice. I'm very happy with the transition between the two and it's time to really heighten some of this great glow and highlight that we have emerging from the opening in the way that we do over here on the left hand side and the way that we do at the bottom here. So for this, I am I'm going to assume this is dry. This is dry, good. So clean spot on the palette. We're taking about one third yellow ochre to two thirds titanium white. We'll throw in a little bit of our cad yellow to warm it up, give it a saturation back. And we'll switch, as I'm sure you've guessed, to our fan brush. Now, it can be wet, it can be dry, it really depends on the amount of detail you want back here. Mine's kind of in between right now, so we'll get a bit of both. But I am going to start in the highlight of the trees back here, something we've already established. And I'm going to paint it working forward in the painting. We'll create some clusters. The majority of those highlights should actually happen towards the right hand side because the light is streaming in from the left. Pressing a little bit harder with my brush as we get closer to us up here to make those more distinct markings. Sometimes just using one or two of the points on the fan brush to get very intentional applications. You can see that it works nicely even towards the top. And we don't 
want to completely fill all of this tunnel with it, but we do want enough to make it feel prominent and natural and sun soaked. We always do a little keyword in these lessons that you can note towards or rather that you can note in the comments that notes that you are one of the people who made it towards the end of the video. Often, on average, it's about 13% who make it to the absolute end, so if you made it, congratulations to you. I think that speaks to your character, the fact that you are really invested and you are probably going to end up with a, a great piece because of that follow through, that attention to detail. So today the keyword, you can use it just in the comments as the word itself or you can incorporate it into a sentence, is sun soaked. Much like the background here. I think it's quite appropriate for this one. But again, if you made it this far, good for you. Genuinely, I think that means your painting will turn out quite nice. really like this progress. I feel like we need a little bit more highlight on some of these trees, and I can even tap it on with this brush. I can do a little drag. It'll just balance it to a greater degree. Doing some more so towards the tops. On the sides that are receiving light. Yeah, that just feels so natural. We can do some over here too. Again, I'm not going in for just a tap, I'm going in and I'm tapping and I'm doing a little drag. There we go. We're also going to take this pigment and we're going to tap some light on towards the foliage, which is working its way through down here. From the reminder that, again, if you'd like the traceable, the reference photos, the visuals of all of the materials, bonus lessons, our large painting series, our critiques, the exclusive Facebook group, my ebooks, all of that good stuff, it is linked in the video description. And it is up on Patreon. It's a great way to support the channel if you appreciated this lesson and you just want to help out, or again, you want some of those perks and benefits. Additionally, the brush set that I've been working with for this lesson, it's a five-piece brush set, entirely cruelty-free. Don't have to worry about the glues in the brushes, being that something that's derived of animals or anything of that nature. That brush set is on sale this weekend, till the end of the month. So, there's a link to that in the description. It's half off, 50%. I know we just had a sale like this about a month and a half ago, but a lot of you mentioned that you missed it, so... We're back. You have a, you have a second opportunity. I hope you take advantage of this one. There we go. So close to being finished. I think we'll continue to brighten up this area. Extra titanium white. We're mixing that in with our previously created brightest point. We're just going brighter. I am going to make my brush nice and damp, wipe off the excess. And one of the bo uh, bonuses of uh, getting this brush set is that the fan brush acts as a soft bristled and a hard bristled fan brush. So you don't have to switch between the two. Something that I used to always have to do in the lessons and 
felt like I was cleaning and working with so much more than I needed to. So this is the, the solution, create a brush that does both. And again, all the lessons I've done in the last, at this point, pretty much two years have been done with this brush set. So if you're going back and doing other lessons, and you have this brush set, you know that you'll have all of the brushes, all of those right tools to get the job done right. I'm going to add a little bit of that highlight down here as well. Oh, that made a big difference. That's great. Really just getting lost in the background there as you want to. Here, one more time, we'll do a, a nice little close-up. You can see how it progresses outwards. You can see how we get some of those details on our trees. Just like so. Really trying to brighten that edge. And from here we are on the stage of touch-ups, one of which is grabbing some burnt umber, mars black, titanium white, maybe a hint of our yellow ochre, and simply Cleaning up the edges here that we had foliage wrap around in ways that we didn't want to. We can also make the backs of these trees. And when I say the backs, I mean about two-thirds inwards, a little bit darker, because that's going to be the darkest point. Light is going to wrap around the left-hand side greatly. It's going to wrap around the right-hand side a little bit as well. So the darkest point isn't on one side. It's more so towards the middle, but more so the right-hand side just because of where that light is. And I'm going to apply this slightly darker tap and drag to just the two trees that are essentially closest to us because, remember as we move into that distance, we have more of that reflective atmospheric light. But here, we have more of the innate coloring and with that, the more dramatic values at least the contrast of them. So, just making this a bit darker. I'll do so over here, but this is going to be towards the actual backs of the trees. And so, instigate slightly more depth. There we are. We can also create burnt umber, titanium white, a little bit of our yellow ochre. And add to the sand. Said that I wasn't done with it in the beginning. We haven't gone back for quite some time, but just adding in a couple more of those crossing Shadows can be beneficial in the distance if you didn't do that many initially and you ended up doing a lot of trees along here. There we go. But with that, that is essentially our lesson. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you feel like you learned something. I hope you feel motivated and inspired to go out and create your own rendition. For everybody who is up over on Patreon, I can't wait to see your versions up over on the Facebook group. And this was a real pleasure. I have a really nice sunset coming in the near future. The next episode of our large 24 by 36 inch painting series should also be up very soon. And it's almost fall. So make sure that you have your cadmium reds, your burnt siennas, your cad yellows, because we are going to start working with that palette very soon, and I'm excited. So I'll see you soon. Thank you so much for being here. I really enjoyed this. Um, and above all, as always, stay creative.